welcome back. It is Chipo time again in the Chipo Nation. Hey, always nice to have you along for the ride. Today we're looking at a red dot winner. Red dot winner of 2020. What does that mean exactly? Well, that's kind of like a design award. Yeah, apparently this one won for 2020. So the JMG 3401 does ship in that black box. Nice gray charcoal kind of a look going on here. I like it. I like it. Kind of a classy now let's just open up that box and voila in the box not a heck of a lot other than the multimeter and they do get a certificate now we have a date of manufacture of 2020 so it is uh, innovative boy look at this it is held together by a magnet you undo that and voila you are in very very neat and once again just clicks in place like so so it's a protective cover at the same time very very cool now you also get a uh, little carrying pouch as well so you can put it all in here and uh, you're all ready for saturday night really nice test lead storage here um very very nicely done test leads have a bit of a ridge on them so uh, a little bit easier to hold per se they are a tad on the small side and the rated a cat 3 1000 volts and if you take off that shroud yeah you lose a cat rating but wow that is a pointy tip look at that in the meter itself well really nicely yeah that is a perfect fit even have that extra molding here so it keeps things in place uh when it's out and about so uh, yeah all in all pretty neat little design back of the meter you have your tilt stand and as well as your battery compartment powered by two AAA batteries and it does have a 200 milliamp fuse rated at 250 volts according to the back wow so yeah as far as the tilt stand you know it, it's 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 okay um mm -hmm. yeah it's okay it's okay not gonna be able to one hand it though you need two hands because you just don't have enough enough grip not enough grip ah now when you take off the top um i personally think it suffers a little bit in terms of quality here um if you look at it might be hard to see on the camera but um you know molding plastic wise it's okay but uh, yeah, it's not, you know, it's not stellar, but a really nice job in the exterior, you know? So uh, yeah, go figure. And of course we have our soft touch buttons here at the top. And yeah, overall should be interesting. The range selector switch itself, you know, it's a little bit stiff and it, it, I, I don't like this, you know, where you gotta kind of really dig and look, look at my fingers and it, I gotta pinch it. I gotta pinch it to turn it. I don't like that. I don't wanna pinch my rotary selector. Uh, starting off the nine o'clock or off position volts ac dc up to 1000 volts resistance continuity capacitance and diode frequency and duty cycle battery testing mode 9 volt and 1.5 volt high current amps ac dc milliamps ac dc up to 400 milliamps live wire finally non-contact voltage starting at the far left we have our select switch followed by the range and rel in the middle max min and on the far right we have our hold which doubles as a backlight at the very bottom of the meter on the far left we have our high current amp in the middle we have our common or ground and on the far right we have our 400 milliamp input as well as our voltage frequency diode capacitance resistance and live wire try saying that three times fast the bottom, the far left, without further ado let's turn on the meter bada boom bada bing bada bang we are greeted with a well rather lackluster lcd display yes liquid crystal digital technology will never die no but uh, anyway it's okay um it does have a lot of glare though you know a lot of glare and you seem to lose part of your angle uh depending on how you're looking but ah eh, it's okay digits themselves are a good size actually about 20 millimeter so not too small not too big pretty well i'd say perfect on a multimeter yeah just so you know one thing about having a magnetic opening case is the fact that it sticks to everything so you stick it on your bench you never know what you're gonna find i was looking for these things three years ago wow Let's get this party started with a precision voltage reference test and 5.001 volts is what we get. Hey, pretty good. Next up, AC voltage. Gonna have to switch it to AC volts. There we go. Got our handy dandy Mr. Plug out here. And survey says 120 volts. Looking good. Now this is also true RMS. Very nice. 
So in order to check your duty cycle and frequency, you gotta move ranges. Yeah, so you have to disconnect the leads, change the ranges, and plug everything back in. Why, oh why can't they just put it on the same AC range? I'll never know. Anyway, here we are, 50% duty cycle. The meter also comes with a battery testing mode. And believe it or not, a lot of people actually ask for this feature. I know some people say, why, oh, why do they put this on a multimeter? Well, you'd be surprised. A lot of people want it. That's why it's there. So take a quick look at the nine volt. All you do is put it on the nine volt setting and attach the leads. I know this battery is bad and yeah, it's putting a bit of a load and it's coming up as 5.4, so definitely. This one is no good. Quick resistance check right now. Let's see how fast it is to range sitting at one mega ohm, two mega ohm, three, six mega ohm, seven mega ohm, eight mega ohm, nine. Yeah, not too bad, not too shabby. Let's bring it down. Six, five, three mega ohm, two, one mega ohm. Hey, that's all right, that's okay. Let's try 700K, 780K, 789K. Yeah, not too bad, not too bad. Accuracy-wise and resistance range, it is stellar. Look at that, 100 ohm, spot on. Not just for the heck of it, let's take these test leads and just put them together, see if we have any resistance on them. 0.1 of an ohm, so just a tad, just a tad. By the way, the rail switch is only for capacitance. It is not for resistance. Now, by the way, you do get a little manual with your Jimmy multimeter, um, but it's all in Chinese. Now, of course, you have your numerics here, so you can at least see the specs, but uh, the rest of it, unless you speak Chinese, might not come in very handy. Okay, LED diode testing time. Here we go. We are in the LED swing of things. Start off with our standard diode here. No worries here. We don't get a nice audible beep, however, but we are getting the forward voltage drop, so all looks fine. Okay, let's try the LEDs. Is it gonna light them all up? Is it, is it? Starting off with the green, and it is lit with our forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Yes, same. Onto the red, looking good. Three for three. The blue, yes. Oh, look at that, look at that. Five for five. Illumination and the forward voltage drop. Beauty. Output voltage in dial mode is a very respectable 3.3 volts. Let's check out the backlight already. Hold down on that hold button. And there we go. So it's okay, you know. We have a bleeding on the left. Um, but uh, it does the job. Now, is it going to stay on permanently? Good question. Let's find out. Oh, no. Well, that was quick. So, yeah, what was that? 10 seconds? 15 seconds tops? <sighs> Already capacitance is next. This goes up to 60 millifarad. Hey, not too bad. Not too bad at all. Here we go, starting off. This is a 10 millifarad cap. Let's just see how it is in terms of overall speed. So we're already in the millifarad range. Very nice. And there we go, 9.7 millifarad. Didn't take too long. Okie dokie. Okay, finally, we're looking at our 100 millifarad. Let's see if we can do better than spec. You know, I love better than spec. Oh, yeah. 100 millifarad, 100,000 microfarad. And, oh yes, oh, 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 oh. Come on. You were there, I saw you. Briefly, maybe, no, no, no. 74.6, that's a little low actually. Oh, oh, whoa, 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 87. 87.47, 98, there we go. So, hey, better than spec 100 millifarad. And yeah, 98 is what this should read thereabouts and perfect, so. Hey, better than spec. Next up, it's continuity. Default probes. Three, two, one. Well, it's pretty loud, but it's there's a delay on the latch. Let's try the probe masters. Probe masters, here we go. A little bit of a delay still with the latching, but definitely a little bit louder and a little bit quicker. Not bad, not bad at all. Wow, 81.8 decibels maximum output in continuity. That is freaking loud. In milliamp mode right now, 300 and 
50 milliamps according to the power supply coming up is 351 okay let's take it up a blotch now remember we only have a 400 milliamp threshold and oh we are over but uh hey oh, oh no problem let's try it again we did get over and yeah around 700 actually it is uh taking us offline bring it back down and we are good so no oh, interesting so we can get safely i'd say up to about yeah about to about 600 milliamps so you can see size wise definitely smaller than your average multimeter um you can put this in your pocket i would assume uh, just need a bit of a bulky pocket but it'll definitely fit in there quick voltage showdown i've got the key side on the far left on the far right we got mr fluke and in the middle we have our little jimmy here we go sitting at four volts right now take it up up and away 5.68 volts 5.706 for the fluke 5.707 for Jimmy and 5.701 for Mr. Keysight up, up and away, hitting 10.8 volts, 10.83 for the Keysight, 10.84 and 10.86 up, up further. Let's try it around 20, 20.20 20 volts, 20.23 for the Keysight, 20.25 for the JMI and 20.26 for Mr. Fluke, pretty well neck and neck. So let's just top it off 30.90 volts. 30.904, 30.906, and 30.908. Wow, look at that. Very, very nice. So in terms of overall accuracy, uh, it can definitely keep up with the big boys. And just hanging around for a good time, not a long time. There you go. So that magnetic backing really is uh, pretty good. So you can definitely put this anywhere you need to hang it as long as there's a metal backing. That magnet will do its job contact voltage mode here we go i'm at the breaker panel and no worries here we have our strength meter coming up and i've got three bars and that's pretty well i would expect okay good ncv same thing with the wall sockets Yeah, so it works really well. Unfortunately, Livewire is a fail. The uh, the only only one that doesn't work with this meter, the only problem I've had, does not work. This is a good outlet, good outlet, and uh, no can do. Nothing, absolutely nothing. Yeah. So you see here with the uh, test, I've got a nice Livewire uh, connect going on right now. And indeed we do have juice on the circuit. And unfortunately with the uh, Jimmy, we have nothing. So it's telling us it's live, but yeah, it's not giving us any audible alert. So uh, completely useless. Too bad, the one feature that just didn't work. Oh well. And this brings me to the biggest problem with this multimeter is trying to get the back off. So you gotta change that fuse. Well, guess what? You are so screwed because it is a nightmare. Uh, there's no screws. No, what you have to do is you have to take a sharp slash blunt object and get into this crease and kind of pry it out like a clam. Oh my God, it's insane. Now that somehow got the red dot award. How is that possible? I guess dots don't really think, I don't know. Um, yeah, so a real big PIA if you have to open up this multimeter. Yeah, so to get this off, you've actually got to get into that groove and just slowly, but surely. Oh, it's ridiculous. Just so ridiculous. And there you go. Then it pops off. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh. Alrighty, here we are on the inside of this little beast. I'm telling you, that was one trial and tribulation to get the back off. Absolutely insane. I have no idea what they were thinking, but you know what? I don't think they were thinking way, way too much of a fiasco. A lot Just of fun. Okay, enough of that ramble. Here we go. So starting off in the middle, you can see those are the battery 
connectors. That's what connects to the PCB. That's, of course, housing those uh, two AAA batteries. Starting off with those input jacks. They are the split variety. Once again, we see those about 90% of the time in the cheap old yeah, round. One thing that doesn't really turn my crank is the fact that is awfully close, that current shunt, to the, um, what is that? Uh, that is the high current uh, input. But um, yeah, you're right on the edge there, right on, right on the edge of that plastic. So, eh. On the milliamp side here, we have a PPTC that is a resettable polystyle fuse and uh, we're rated at 400 milliamps on the milliamp range. So thank God at least, if you do blow your milliamp fuse, you're not gonna have to bother changing it and open up the back. Oh, there is a God. Update date of 2019, November 26. Um, so about a Our year speaker older. piezo and we do have a surface mount capacitor. And let's just move it up the line a little bit more. And there are the contacts for the batteries. And look at that, we have a PTC here way at the top. Isn't that interesting? Now that PTC is on the voltage side, but uh, yeah, right at the top. And the main IC is the HY12P65 from Hikon Technologies. It's a little true RMS IC and this sucker is loaded. Boy, it has everything, um, high input impedance, a built-in input buffers, uh, 4x15 LCD drivers, you name it, it is loaded. And to the right of him, we have the main EEP ROM. That is what feeds all the good data, the TC066. Oh, top, you see that gray strip? That is actually a magnet. Yep, there's the magnet. It is in there, sort of like a, a strip of uh, adhesive. But uh, boy, I'm telling you, that sucker is really, really strong. Ah! Pretty small selector tracks. Yeah, those are tiny, tiny. Um, no grease on there whatsoever, but uh, yeah, very, very tiny. Now, if you notice, take a good look at the soldering job on those input jacks. Wow, I take back what I said. Not so great. Look at that middle common ground here. Um, absolutely no solder on there whatsoever. Um, so yeah, kind of scary. Here we see the Elastomar Zebra strip, and there once again is the adhesive magnetic strip that's both on the top and the bottom. Rotary selector switch, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six pads, and uh, there's our soft touch buttons, the whole nine yards. On the back here as well, we have the programmable headers for factory default calibration, and at the top here, we have the um, connectivity for the Zebra strip. And once again, that main LCD display is just basically a couple of pieces of paper over some glass. So, yeah, that's it. That's all for Already going to put it back together. Come back with my closing thoughts. Well, Jimmy Home, it's time to go home. Yeah, the JMG3401 just did not rock my boat. Sorry. I really wanted to like this. I wanted to like it a whole lot. But there was just a few nagging things that drove me absolutely insane. Too bad, really, because overall, performance-wise, it really wasn't bad. Um, it's aesthetically pleasing. That has that cool shell design with that magnetic backing. Hey, that is really But after neat. using it for a while, I'm telling you, those test leads are subpar. Uh, they bend really easily, and I don't think they're going to have a lot of long-term usefulness. And uh, that rotary selector switch, super painful. Ah, I did not like that. Don't even get all. me started on that horrible fuse access. I mean, that is just insane. Why away a to the screwdriver and rip off the front end? Absolutely crazy. For something that is so well thought out aesthetically, it's just really <laughs> piss poor overall design. Wow, can I actually say that word? I just did. And anyway. the JMG3401 gets a uh, disheartened 2.5 out of five stars. Yeah, that's too bad, Jimmy. But you know what? <laughs> Time to go home. Lots more coming your way. Month of April is just around the corner and I've got a slew of goodies for you guys. Hey, till the next one, keep on testing.